Nagi Seishiro is one of the most appreciated but also one of the most disappointing characters in Blue Lock. In this video, we'll discuss his abilities, his character, and also the reason why I think he's very disappointing. Also, disappointing doesn't mean he's a bad player. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, but only if you enjoy. And in the comments, let me know what you think about Nagi as a character, and if you think that he's a disappointment, or that he's performing as good as he should. You can also give me ideas for future videos that you would want to see. Let's not waste more of your precious time, let's get into this. First thing first, let's talk about Nagi's main weapon, his trapping ability, or should I say his only weapon. But that trapping ability is so versatile that it allows him to do a lot of things. The best way to put it is that it allows him to trap the ball at any given speed and in any given position. First we have the black hole trapping, which is very effective when it is open, because it can instantly kill the momentum of a pass or even a shot, which gives Nagi the time to set up his next play. Then there is the first touch passes. No matter the position he is in, he can send direct and precise passes to his teammates without having to stop the ball. He can also trap the ball in a way that allows him to put himself in a comfortable position to score every time. Having such freedom allows him to adjust to players easily, giving his team more freedom and more ways to pass him the ball to create a goal. Now my disappointment is not related to his character writing, but it is because he failed to evolve. After getting trained by Crane Sprints, Ryo and Chigiri showed very well what they were capable of doing. Ryo and Chigiri were consistently a problem during that game, and Nagi as well started very well. After Chris Prince's training, I was expecting a lot from Nagi. Especially at the beginning of the game, when we saw Nagi make plays like using his body to block players, stopping the ball and dribbling by himself. Getting past players, making great passes, getting the ball back, faking and then shooting the ball. And then he would have scored if he wasn't for Yukimiya intervening. So when I saw that, I was thinking Nagi was going crazy for the rest of the game. And then after that, he just basically died. But I liked the whole idea about Nagi expanding on his creativity. Until at some point, he simply decided to go ask Ryo for his help. Nagi realized that he literally failed to evolve. He couldn't get better on his own, he couldn't expand on his creativity, so he needed Ryo to be his brain. So even that super goal he scored later does not impress me at all. I thought it was a great play, especially after scoring against Gagamaru and two MetaVision users. But not only this was out of luck, but this was also because of Ryo's help, because Ryo was pushing him. This shows that Nagi didn't have the ability to score if he was on his own. His own ego and creativity were not enough to get him there. And this is why I think he is very disappointing. If you compare him to all of our main guys in Blue Lock, I don't think much need to be said about Ryo and Isagi, because those two shown to be able to perform at a very high level. Same with Bachira and Chigiri that both found the formula to score on their own. The problem with Nagi for me is not the fact that he's underwhelming, but it's because instead of trying to find a way to improve like Ryo and Isagi did or even instinctively, all he did was going to ask for help. The problem here is that Nagi had so much potential, and splitting up with Ryo was one of his smartest decisions. It allowed him to expand his creativity and make him better in general to be a better asset to a team. And all this made him the number 6 in blue lock. This decision also allowed Ryo to get to the point he is right now. With Chris Prince and Agi's guidance, Nagi was supposed to become one of the best. And that play that I explained where he almost scored if he wasn't for Yukimiya's intervening was the perfect example of that. You could see an actual evolution because unlike before when he was forced to just trap the ball in the air and do quick moves shooting the ball and passing the ball, he actually learned how to think on his own, putting the ball down, dribbling and making moves on his own. That pass he made to Agi before getting the ball back before shooting, he was the one controlling that action. But after that play, he simply died for the rest of the game. Until he realized that he needed Ryo's help, not even to get better, but simply to beat Isagi once. But even after scoring a super goal that shook the world, I see don't see it as something as impressive. Because even though it was really cool, there is no improvement in that action. He did the usual thing that he always did. You don't feel like this is a new Nagi, this is just simply the Nagi we knew that did a play based on luck and scored a super goal. The thing for me is that I feel like Nagi could have actually been somebody. And I'm not saying it's too late because knowing how this show goes, I know he's going to pop off later on. What I'm saying is right now was the perfect moment to see how he improved as a player. But instead, he simply shown that he was unable to work on his own and made a decision that could potentially destroy him as a player. And this is what is making him a waste of potential. Now after saying all this, I'm just going to clarify that I love Nagi and he's one of my favorite characters. 
which is mainly the reason why I care so much and him being the waste of potential annoys me. What do you think about Nagi? Do you think he is also disappointing or do you think he is actually doing a great job? Let me know about that in the comments. Now if you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, but only if you enjoy. And I will see you all next time. Peace.